Hi everybody, I'm Pamela Atwood. I'm a gerontologist, a certified dementia practitioner, and a certified laughter leader. And welcome back to our caregiver series. In this show, we're gonna talk about the related disorders. A lot of people uh, refer to Alzheimer's disease and related disorders. Uh, they are the primary causes of dementia. So I thought I'd spend a little time in this show talking about the related disorders. But first I want to define a little bit about the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia. A lot of people ask me this. Um, I may have covered this in one of the first four, four or five shows, but basically dementia is a symptom. Dementia is technically defined as a loss of intellectual functions, things like reasoning, judgment, and memory. In people with dementia, it's usually short-term memory that's mostly affected, not long-term memory, until very late in whatever disease process they have. So there are, are many, many kinds of diseases and conditions that can cause dementia. So for dementia to be defined as a progressive degenerative disease, it's usually a neurological condition. The most common cause is Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's disease is not a new disease. A lot of people ask me that and they'll say, well, isn't it just because we've got so many more old people now or we're better at identifying it. And part of both of those are true. Alzheimer's has been described in medical journals for centuries. Dr. Alois Alzheimer from Germany discovered the actual plaques and tangles that were described in the microscopic studies of brain tissue back in the early 1900s. So it's certainly not a new disease. We are learning more and more about it. And as we are thankfully shedding some of the stigma about it, people are becoming more open to get a diagnosis and physicians and other clinicians are better at diagnosing and describing some of the symptoms. So today what we're going to talk about is some of these other kinds of conditions that cause dementia. Now a lot of times people will say oh well this is this is new and it's a sudden onset so it's probably not Alzheimer's disease. That may be true. There is another related kind of condition called delirium and delirium is when someone has a sudden onset, um, acute but short-term change in mental status. Delirium can be caused by many things, especially a post-operative procedure or if they've been under anesthesia. If a patient has had a change in mental status after a urinary tract infection or an upper respiratory infection, that can happen and that's a delirium. A very high number of patients post-operatively are discharged from a hospital with delirium still unresolved. So that really can be part of the discharge plan that needs to be considered is how we're going to help a person resolve that short-term mental status change. If it doesn't go away, it then gets reclassified as dementia. So as I mentioned just a minute ago, Alzheimer's is the number one cause of dementia. The researchers are still debating this, but in all of the research that I've read recently, the number two cause of dementia right now is Lewy body dementia. Now Lewy body is really the crossroads of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Parkinson's disease affects the basal ganglia deep in the back of the brain and the uh, trans neurotransmitters in the back there are lacking certain chemicals especially serotonin and dopamine so with dopamine the, that can be replaced somewhat through medications like Cinemat which is the brand name for carbidopa levodopa combination medication and other medications there are 19 or 20 different kinds of medications to treat Parkinson's disease however none of them stop the progression of the disease. A person with Parkinson's will continue to get worse. The only thing that research tells us now can change the course of Parkinson's disease is exercise. So um, I actually volunteer right now with our Parkinson's disease associate excuse me, the American Parkinson's Disease Association, Connecticut chapter. And starting this year, I've been serving as the president of their board of directors, and I absolutely love working with that organization. I do also volunteer with the Alzheimer's Association, but right now my leadership role is really with the APDA. And I've been very, very blessed to work with some wonderful professionals and some very, very knowledgeable folks, including our executive director, Mary Ellen Thibodeau. And I really encourage people, no matter what condition you have, find out whatever you can by calling the local chapter of the non-governmental nonprofit organization like the APDA or like the Alzheimer's Association or if it's Lewy body dementia the Lewy body dementia association so let's go back to Lewy bodies 
Lewy bodies are very similar structures to Alzheimer's plaques and tangles. Alzheimer's disease, the plaque there is made up mostly of a protein called alpha synu excuse me, called beta amyloid. In Lewy body dementia, it's an alpha synuclein protein. So it's a very similar progression of buildup of plaque and tangles. It's just a different protein beta amyloid in Alzheimer's, alpha synuclein in Lewy body dementia. That really doesn't matter a whole lot because we still don't know what causes it and we still don't have yet any properties or um, medications to break up those plaques to see if that would help stop the disease or arrest these conditions. With Lewy body dementia though there are some interesting hallmark signature symptoms. So one of the things with Lewy body dementia is that they have these great fluctuations in alertness where one moment they are completely alert and oriented and the next moment it's, it's like they're very confused and, and very disoriented. They also tend to have hallucinations, usually visual hallucinations and very often with repeated themes, especially themes about people and animals. I've had clients of mine who have said, um, I, I, I saw that those girls in the white dresses, they were um, ice skating in our driveway again last night. And they're very con convinced that they're real. They often aren't upset by them, um, but they are somewhat disturbed sometimes because they know that it's a hallucination. They know that it's not real, and that kind of scares them. A friend of mine had Al um, Lewy body dementia, and she said to me, Pam, I know as clearly as I see you sitting there that there is a moose sitting at the end of the hallway. I know you don't see the moose, but I can tell you as clearly as I see you sitting there, I see that moose. Um, so the disease tends to progress similarly to Alzheimer's disease, but um, can be a little more rapid in the end stage. And people with Lewy body dementia can decline more quickly at the end and uh, their end of life course is, is, is more brief than Alzheimer's disease. With Lewy body dementia, the challenge that we have is that for people with Lewy bodies, they also when when someone has hallucinations we usually treat that with antipsychotic medications people with lewy bodies tend to be very sensitive to those medications so those medications can sometimes make their symptoms worse it really becomes uh, a a judgment call on the physician and the clinicians working with the patient to see you know which is worse the the hallucinations and the psychiatric symptoms or uh, the other kinds of behaviors or the worsening of the symptoms if that person has a neuroleptic or antipsychotic sensitivity. So it can be very, very difficult to manage some of those behaviors. In my experience, and I have not yet seen a research study about this, and I would love to challenge any of the researchers out there, um, I would love to see if anybody has any information, please share it with me. I believe, based on my experience when working with people with Lewy body dementia, that there is a sensory processing component. Now, I say that as a parent of someone with sensory processing issues, um, pretty much grown out of, but still occasionally affecting one of my children. With sensory processing, they tend to either be sensory avoiding or sensory seeking. But my um, experience is that people with Lewy body dementia tend to be sensory seeking, although it could actually even be some of the sensory avoidance that's creating some of the behavioral issues. They tend to be um, people who uh, do well with weighted blankets and more sensory input for uh, aromatherapy, for kinesthetic touch, those kinds of things. So if you have someone who is suffering with or living with uh, Lewy body dementia and suffering from some of the symptoms of some of the behaviors, try some of the sensory processing diet items to see not food related but sensory interventions to see if that might help the person. The third most common cause of Lewy body dementia is vascular dementia. Now from vascular dementia people have an accumulation of mini strokes, small strokes or a big stroke that affect the flow of um, the blood to the brain and the oxygen to the brain which then limits because of the cell death as a result of that micro bleed or that micro block what happens is they limit the cognitive abilities so it's a buildup of these small strokes over time which may or may not show up on a CAT scan or an MRI but what happens is that enough of those multiple infarcts they used to call it multi-infarct dementia build up over time and we call that vascular dementia one of the differences between Alzheimer's and vascular 
macular dementia is the progression. So with Alzheimer's, it's this slow sloping down decline. With vascular dementia, it tends to be a stepwise progression. When families tell me about their story with their parent or their sibling or their spouse's vascular dementia, they are telling me stories like this. They'll say, well, you know, mom was doing okay, but then all of a sudden Memorial Day last year, she had this spell and she was doing fine. And, and then all of a sudden her speech was slurred or, or whatever symptoms they describe. But after that, she was okay. She kind of bounced out. But then, oh my gosh, I remember my daughter's first day of school. She was really confused that day. And what they're really doing is they're describing that stepwise progression where someone's going along okay, and then there's a sudden decline, and then they're going along okay, and then there's a sudden decline. Those steps down are representative of those little mini strokes or a, or a, a larger stroke and the accumulation of those over time progressing downwards. So that's vascular dementia. Not a lot that we can do about vascular dementia. One of the challenges in de vascular dementia, and how it again differentiates from Alzheimer's disease, is that with vascular dementia, it really depends on where the strokes are happening before we can kind of determine what skills or abilities or losses a person might have. So with Alzheimer's and Lewy body dementia, it tends to globally go through the brain. With vascular dementia, it really depends on where the weaknesses are happening in the vasculature in the brain. Vascular dementia is also more common in our very old population. When you're in your ninth or even tenth decade, your vasculature in your brain just isn't as strong as when you were younger. So it's um, a very much uh, vascular dementia sometimes, but you know, not, not always, but it can be vascular dementia in the people who are 90 and above. The fourth most common is frontotemporal lobe dementia. So if this is your temporal lobe here near your ears, the frontal lobes are up here in your forehead behind your eyes. Those are the disease centers that are affected in frontotemporal lobe dementias, things like Pick's disease and, and other kinds of diseases. These tend to have a patients, these tends, these patients tend to have more, um, more memory until the middle part of the disease. Their memory is better, but they have bigger judgment issues, problems with impulsivity, and um, whether it's with gambling or, or other money issues, people tend to have a little more uh, judgment and um, planning issues more prominently in frontotemporal lobe disease. In the middle or later part of the disease, it really isn't that much different from Alzheimer's disease disease or vascular dementia. So um, with all four of these top four causes of dementia, we don't know exactly what causes them or how to prevent them. Why does one person with high blood pressure get vascular dementia but another one doesn't? We don't really know. Um, we don't know what triggers Alzheimer's. Um, Lewy body is clearly linked to Parkinson's disease, but we're not sure exactly why. When someone has Parkinson's for many years, they can develop dementia or um, as in the case of Robin Williams last year very famously, people start with a cognitive impairment with Lewy body disease and then within about a year or so develop a tremor. I do want to make one, class, one clarification there. Parkinson's and Lewy body dementia are closely linked, but not everybody with Parkinson's has a cognitive impairment. That's a very important distinction to make. Uh, whereas Lewy body dementia really is a cognitive impairment that also presents a uh, physical functional tremor. The other thing that's very important to note is that there's a big difference between Parkinson's disease and essential tremor. So part of the difference there is a resting tremor is Parkinson's versus someone reaching for something and having a tremor is essential tremor. There's lots of other things. We could certainly devote a whole show to that topic as well. Oh my goodness, I'm going over my usual 12 minutes. That's two shows in a row. Oh my goodness, I'm really, I've, I'm talking and I can't shut up. All right, I did find a inspirational quote that I, I hope will um, give some support to our confident caregivers. And this is actually from William James, the father of modern day psychology. And he said that the greatest discovery of the 20th century is that our attitude of mind determines our quality of life not our circumstances. So I leave you with that today. 
and I thank you again for, for watching. You can always subscribe to this series in um, YouTube, going search for Pamela Atwood. You can also go to our website, which is www.agingcareacademy.org. And at agingcareacademy.org, you can find all kinds of information, register for courses, online classes, live classes. Uh, you can also find out about our consultation services and sign up for a consultation. You can follow me on Instagram at Pamela.Atwood, on Twitter at Pam Atwood ALZ, and you can always email me directly at Pamela Atwood LOL at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching. Have a great night.